Hello everybody, this is Leslie from purple.com and this is another free bonus lecture for the Node.js masterclass. In this lecture, I'm going to talk about file truncation and one of the most common questions I get on that topic. That question looks like this. In our data library, why are we truncating files before updating the data inside of them? I removed the fs.truncate function and everything still worked fine. fs.write file is supposed to overwrite all the contents, right? So why truncate at all? This is a very good question, and its answer is a little complicated, so it's going to take a little while to explain. This lecture has three parts. First, I'm going to explain what truncation is and why it's included in our data library. Second, I'm going to show you why it's true that someone could, in some circumstances, remove truncation and not experience any errors. Third, I'm going to show you how in other circumstances, removing truncation will actually generate an error, and it is because of these last examples that we always truncate just to be sure. So part one, what is truncation anyway? In dictionary terms, truncating just means shortening by cutting off a part of something. In Node.js terms, truncating means setting the size of a file to a certain number of bytes, defaulting to zero bytes. So let's say you have a file with 100 bytes inside of it, and you want to truncate it. There are four possible situations. A, you could call truncate and set the size of the file to less than 100. B, you could call truncate and set the size of the file to more than 100. C, you could call truncate and set the size of the file to exactly 100. Or D, you could call truncate and not set the size of the file at all. In situation A, since you're telling it to truncate to less than 100, Node is going to chop characters, bytes, off the end of that file until it gets the file down to 100 bytes. In situation B, since you're setting the file size to more than 100, truncate is actually going to add null bytes to that file until it reaches the size you specified. In situation C, since you're asking it to set the size to 100, but it's already 100, nothing is going to happen. And in situation D, since you didn't specify a size of the file, Node is going to default to zero bytes and eliminate everything from that file. So that's what truncation means, and that's what truncation is in Node.js. How are we using it in our example application? We're using it inside of our data library here whenever we want to update the contents of a file. We're doing it inside of this lib update function. To update a file, we read in the contents of the file, parse the contents into a data object, update that data object in whatever way we want to, then convert that new data to a JSON string, then truncate the old file down to zero bytes, then write the new JSON to that empty file there. So let's see this in action. Here, I've got this sample index.js file. It's pulling in the data library here in as a dependency, and then it's using it to update the contents of this file, foo.json, which you can see in our fire directory here, or the contents here. Foo.json currently just has one little object inside of it, and that says foo bar. Now let's say I want to update it to foo dog instead. I'm going to write foo dog here, and then I'm going to save it and run this file. We see success, and now foo.json has foo dog inside of it. That's how we're using this library. Now let's go on to part two of this lecture so you can see how removing truncation in this example really won't cause any problems. Part two. Let's see what happens when we remove truncation from our data library. I'm going to modify this lib.update function and remove the truncation that you see here by just commenting it out. So instead of taking the file contents all the way down to zero bytes, our update function now is just going to call fs write file on the old file without modifying it, without truncating it beforehand. So let's save this and I'm going to modify our index script so that it's going to try to set the file contents of foo.json from foodog back to foobar. So I'm gonna modify this to foobar again, save it, and rerun this script. We get success, and we can see foo.json is returned to foobar, and everything's fine. This moment right here, this experience, is what leads many people to think, oh, truncation must not be necessary. I'll just tear it out of my library. 
So before we fall into that trap, let's just go on to part three so we can explore why tearing out truncation is a big mistake. Part three, let's see how removing truncation can actually cause problems. Once again, we have a file with foobar inside of it, and now I want to update it to be smaller. I want to update it to be A, B instead of foobar. So I'm going to run this file again, and now we see, uh-oh, it's a mess inside of foo.json. It seems like the object for A, B is here, as it should be, but then there are some remnants of foo bar left on the end. They're still in there, and it's all mashed up into what is no longer even valid JSON. But why did this happen? Isn't fs.write file supposed to completely overwrite the contents of the file when we call it? Yes, it is, except when you open the file with the R plus flag like we're doing here. In this case, the write file behavior is going to change, and instead of completely overwriting the contents of the file, it's actually going to write the new data in place, starting at the beginning of the file. So in other words, if your file had this content, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and you tried to write in 1, 2, 3, you'll end up with 1, 2, 3, D, E, F, G, inside of that file. But you'll only notice that error if you're trying to write in content that is fewer bytes than the content it's replacing. Because as we saw in part two, we replaced foo dog with foo bar with no problem because those strings are the same number of bytes. We also could have replaced foo dog with something much longer and not experienced any errors. The error only came because we tried to replace foo bar with AB, and AB is shorter, it's a fewer number of bytes than foo bar. So when write file wrote AB to this file, it wrote it in place and it finished writing the file, but it hadn't overwritten the whole object of foo bar, so there was still some foo bar left. And that, in essence, is why we use truncate and why you shouldn't pull truncate out. One, because we're opening the file with the R plus flag, which changes the behavior of fs.write file. Second, because in some cases, we'll be writing in data that is fewer bytes than the data that preceded it. And since we don't want our files to end up with remnants of the data that it replaced, we are always truncating to make sure the files are completely empty and can be replaced with data of any length. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this bonus lecture, and I hope you now have a firmer grasp on Node.js truncation. And if you're watching this, but you haven't enrolled in the Node.js masterclass yet, please do. You can purchase it at purple.com. Thank you.